of you that are just tuning in, um, you know, what happened was Stefano versus BC Kitty was supposed to be played, but uh, of course, not of course, but they had internet problems and NASL being the ever so flexible league, we we're actually able to push it back and have those those problems worked out so that way they can play at their optimal conditions. They're going to be played tomorrow so that Ben and Kevin can actually get that TVT series. I'm jealous. So again, if you're guys tuning in, what happened thus far, we saw Alicia advance over Sen in a 3-1 victory. We saw Puzzle advance over TT1 in a 3-0 victory. And we were thinking to ourselves, man, it's going to be all one side with Korean pro tosses. But the answer is no. Galaxy's showing lots of virality and just ferocity in his play, just showing that he's willing to, to do what it takes to win. And I'm not saying he cheese at all. I'm saying that he, he's willing to play extremely mind game centric builds where he just go, where he makes you think he's doing one thing and he's doing something else. But now it's the ball's in MC's court, Andre. Yeah. We're on Cloud Kingdom for game number three. Now this is a map that's really hard for Zerg to hold certain bases, especially that fourth base can be really difficult. But even that third base, there's a spot where you can place a cannon really easily where no Zergans can hit it. Queens can, so that's true. Queens okay. can hit that cannon from their middle. Yes, they can <laughs> actually. You can actually just put a queen over here, so it stops that cannon. Actually, I'm pretty sure if you put a cannon outside your natural queen, can hit it from their main base. That's pretty much yes. the, the extent of. If, if a cannon's over here and a queen is actually <laughs> yeah. over here, yeah, the zerg You're will still be able. The queen just like lobs an acid spore and like somehow hits it. I know. So. It's like Diablo three. It's like, oh, that's where you got it. Uh, you can hit it from so far away. <laughs> Uh, anyway, um, seriously, I was like, why well, don't I have queens? <laughs> I want queens to be a class in Diablo 3. Then I would never lose. I would never die. Because then I would transfuse myself all the time. <laughs> exactly. <right? laughs> You're indeed like, how do I be hardcore mode? Diablo 3 doesn't have a queen. Just get like plus 300% movement speed with creep. And then uh, transfuse. You're good to go, man. No problem. You'll never die. Anyway, something interesting to note again a 13 pool coming out here for. Uh, our, our good friend over here, Galaxy. The Zerglings, I think, can actually gun it all the way over and make it there before the cannon finishes. But look at this. MC has the right building SimCity. And he will be almost blocked off. You can see just a single pylon will be able to uh, go ahead and stop any units from going forward. So that's obviously a great position. But he needs to see this coming. Of course, he has a probe to catch everything. And this cannon will barely be up. Uh, it goes for the rocks. It'll be Okay, Andre. MC's got this. Apparently MC, does, man. Uh, I mean, in terms of Cloud Kingdom, there's no real ability for Zerg to to try and bust it. Although you can kind of, yeah, there's no. I mean, it's for the most part, it's pretty acknowledged that you can be safe on this map. That's why Zerg just pretty much goes for that three hatch. Um, what makes Cloud Kingdom a little bit awkward, though, is are the ramps in the center. And even though necessarily, even though you might get the ramp that gives you a lot of advantage, having the ramp doesn't mean you have the watchtower. So Vision can play some kind of a weird uh, role in some kind of mid-game timings or map movement for troops. And that's why sometimes you see Zerg try to go for huge aggression at Protoss' third base. But after that, they enter this really weird time where they're trying to get other bases, but Protoss has a really easy time maneuvering because there's corners. Like in the top center, for example, if you try to hit that, that Zerg third base, you can force yourself into a really tight area, and Zerg really can't do anything about it. So Cloud Kingdom has a lot of open yet not so open spots, and it all depends on how the mid-game unfolds. That's really important that you actually mention this. If I'm a Protoss and I'm already in this position attacking on the hatchery, all of a sudden it's like two little choke points that I have to deal with. That makes Zerg actually for, uh, you know, have to play outward. So they actually want to be grasping this position over here. They want to actually be yeah. taking this position over here and attacking from two different sides or something like that. They want to spread the Protoss thin. So that actually forces Zergs to make units a little bit faster than normal ma uh, matches. If they drone up to that 60, 65 count, they, they will die. They will most certainly die. Um, yeah. Of course, depending on builds, but y you can't be, you know, over, you can't overemphasize the drone count in your economy in this early game stage in case there is a two base timing. Really quick quad gas from MC and uh, wow, really, really quick gases and there's no sign of tech in fact, uh, to go uh, quad gas this fast 
I feel like uh, MC might end up gearing up for a huge Sentry Immortal push or some kind of push from back. And it is pretty strong on this map as well. Yeah. But at the same time, it is MC. You can't ever really say this is what MC will do because he's capable of making everything look a certain way and then completely coming out with something else. Yeah, when you see 4 gate, normally you're thinking robotics facility just because it's a pretty hefty tech investment. And not only that, based on, uh, I guess, the forges and everything, it seems pretty reasonable, I think. I don't think Galaxy is really expecting like Twilight Council or some sort of blink all in. Uh, if it does come, it'll come at a very awkward time where <laughs> I think Zerg is actually the strongest with their drone count. But from here, I would actually expect Galaxy to, um, you know, get around 65 drones just because he saw double gases. That sounds yeah. crazy, but well, I mean, that, you that's can't what really it do much. Exactly. You can't do much with just a straight up robotics facility tech. MC at this point has a couple options. Cow Kingdom, you can kind of like seal off the natural ramp and then go for your third base. And then really just uh, focus all the concentration of defending your third base and turtling so that you can get a good economy. But then Zergs uh, end up getting bases four and five. So mm -hmm. Protoss have been doing that less and less. We can see MC going for that quick immortal. And in response, we see Galaxy just pretty much macroing up and getting up his own upgrades. But interestingly enough, he's getting Carapace. Something uh, very similar to what Sen does, getting that plus one carapace to survive any kind of four gate timing. And Galaxy, I mean, the fact that he's gone for three base and up to 66 drones, which is actually the perfect amount of drones for all of you that don't know, 22 drones per base. That way you can have 16 on the mineral patches and then six on the gases. That gives you the best ability to hold off like pushes. I think this is like the the worst timing for any all in two base play to actually happen. Of course, we don't see that. Instead, MC is looking to play this macro. And I love this, taking out the Kree Tumors. This is oh, so cool, very man. nice. And uh, that's just going to really limit a lot of mobility from Zerg. Oh, try to target down the Observer, and the Queen oh, drops because of yes, it. Yes, it does. A great exchange for MC, picking out three Kree Tumors and a Queen for, for nothing. For free. For nothing. Gratis. No problem. And uh, the big thing, like we said, taking fast thirds on Cloud Kingdom while focusing the area on that third area can be pretty big and advantageous for MC. Now the big thing is that MC uh, is at a pretty good worker count, but so is Galaxy. He's gotten up to almost 80 drones without any real form of damage. And I mean, he's skimmed down a lot of units. He's had three roaches his entire game and a few links. Now he's making a lot of units, but this is also pretty scary from Zerg as well. The fact that they can get up this strong of an economy. So yes, um, I've just always, as a pr when I play pros, I'm always just so worried because then there's really nothing stopping Galaxy from taking bases four and five. Exactly, and what's so powerful at this stage is the Carapace, as you were talking about before. He prioritized Carapace. What if he prioritized plus one missile attack? He's kind of forced to go into roaches, or at least not go into Roach is actually weakens him quite substantially. But now that he's gone Carapace, he can see and gauge the situation very, very easily. So it's like, okay, you didn't do pressure against me. I can switch over to Zerglings pretty efficiently, put all of my gas into Infestors, and receive everything very nicely. So I think at this point, Galaxy is ahead just because of the openings. He didn't actually fall victim to making too many Roaches, and he's just going to pull ahead since his gas yeah. is more forward thinking than his opponent's. You can see a fast hive, pretty standard response from uh, Zerg. They see yep. such heavy turtling, and MC will immediately have to play for that hive timing. We see players like Sase really try to capitalize on this. Nanny Wall loves doing this, Gibbsy as well. Mm -hmm. Just because Zergs go for a fast timing, you have to really hit just as that hive finishes because then Zerg can't do anything with it. Bases four and five, almost done for Galaxy, and MC does have his uh, upgrades lined up pretty nicely. But nonetheless, uh, is M how passive will MC play? That's just a question we'll have to find out in the next few minutes. Yeah, it's a little bit difficult for him to actually scout out that this is going to be a hive timing and he has to push it at this current moment. But I think his build actually incorporates that. Uh, plus two and Thermal Lance will kind of finish at the same time. And he has a great composition out here. So most likely he will push. I think macroing from here and taking a fourth base would be the worst position, obviously, giving your opponent the ability to uh, spend all the potential reinforcement waves, that is, additional infestors that are coming into the battle, only on Broodlords, and he just keeps and retains all of his infestors. You want to have that initial trade and make your opponent say, oh my god, I need to make so many roaches, I need to make corruptors, I need to make infestors to deal with this. Oh. And then all of a sudden, they're not Broodlords. You know, that's what you need to do. Uh, we'll see if he actually pushes forward anytime oh soon. 
What do we owe my? Uh, there's a lot of Lings and Infestors positioned out here, making Galaxy, making me think that Galaxy wants to kind of poke in. But uh, I, I think he just wants to check on what Protoss is up to. He wants to see if he's taking mm -hmm. his fourth base, if, if he's, if what kind of army he has as well. He pretty much has been uh, blind to what his opponent's been doing, but he's just going to see pretty standard Gateway Immortal Colossi. And uh, that should mean he cannot get engaged whatever, whatsoever. As his Hive Text is uh, wrapping up here, you can see Greater Spire about halfway done. So in about a minute and a half, Galaxy will be sitting very nicely with Broodlord Tech. But last time, we saw him only yeah. make four Broodlords. Yeah, on Daybreak, that was uh, pretty impressive. And obviously, you can't count MC out of this game at all, ever. Yeah, uh, he'll always surprise yeah. you. I've see, you've seen him win with pure stalker once against Infestor Broodlord. I, I saw that once. Just Actually, like wow, yeah. pure stalker, and he won. I was like, <laughs> this is just absurd. Like what MC? It's come down to control and positioning, and uh, we'll see if MC uh, just. I guess he's just gonna play this really passive. This is so uncharacteristic of him. But at the same time, is that's what's so awesome to see from MC. Oh. Maybe it works, maybe it doesn't. But the fact that MC is willing to change this completely his style up, not being the two base aggression and kill Zergs, but playing four base Hasuab's turtle style. Yeah, this is so surprising. I mean, oh, Fasters sick. Need to just back out. Man. I mean, great force fields, don't get me wrong, but this is exactly what Zerg wants to do, right? Trade they supply. Just, yeah, trade supplies, and then they slowly but surely start uh, getting more Broodlords. Mm. Now, the push is coming in here, and let me look at the Corruptor count right now. That's really important to actually note because you need to Two. take out those Colossus. They're going to do so much damage, Frodan. He's got two Corruptors. Oh, my God. And three, two Broodlords. Galaxy, where are your Tive Tech 3 units? They're all in the process of making. It's because... Galaxy so made a bunch of Zerglings. Exactly. What's th what's even the purpose of going all of these spine crawlers if you're not going to protect them efficiently? The, they're just going to get sniped to these Colossus. Look at this. Oh my gosh. He's floundering. He's yet choosing. Again. He's trading one fungal for one infestor. Literally, the infestors walk up and get insta get by immortals. You see, MC's blinking forward. The Zerg trying to go in, but the Colossus doing great yeah. amount of damage. Oh my Everything's gosh. absolutely melting. The Brewers are trying to do as much damage, but a blink forward. MC moves out, and Galaxy, with no tier three units, has no. Nothing to say to the might of the Protoss maxed army. It's like game one all over again. The third base just gets cleaned up by MC. And look at this. He has a lot of units backing it up. The one thing, though, MC doesn't have a way to reinforce this army. So it might be a little bit difficult. But what does Galaxy really have in this position? Just a bunch of Zerglings. He's now starting spine crawlers. But I even think that uh, it's not going to be in time. MC will be able to just drill into the main unimpeded and uh, and take everything out. MC does trade his third base, but at this point, MC killed the biggest threat to him. And now, what can really Galaxy do? They're both uh, <laughs> have relatively similar economy. The Queens really can't do anything, and MC has just unstoppable force. There's nothing really to deal with the Colossus. Even if Corruptors come out, there's nothing really threatening the Stalkers to the point where Stalkers just blink up and take care of the Corruptors. GG, GG. gets called out. MC takes game number three in almost an uncanny resemblance to game number one. 144 kills on all four of those Colossus. 144 <sighs> kills. I think they made their their money back. Wow. I think is, they did. That is <laughs> gross. Gross. Gosh. Right. If you're not going to oh protect, if you're not going to protect your uh, your spine crawlers, why even make them? That's right. like like going uh, you know 30 spine crawlers. And having four siege tanks just take out every single one of them, you're just yeah, like, there's just no okay, point. I mean, there's no just problem. They, there's the mortals and stalkers and everything that can deal with them pretty easily. You and then the fungal positioning was like, I'm gonna, gonna I'm just gonna tuck one infester underneath my spine crawlers, fungal, but because it's in range, it just immediately dies to the mortal. Exactly. And then yeah. like send another one to fungal, but immediately dies. And at that point, there's nothing really protecting it. And yeah. Galaxy, like his decision making in terms of his macro has been on point. But his actual macro <laughs> has been lacking. Where are his broodlords, man? Well, I don't even think it's his macro. I think it's his decision to go broodlords at that time because you really don't have the gas to do that. I don't think you do based on you're just getting four base or even, you know, ten gas, let's say. Um, you're still working on that Corruptor account as you're upgrading plus two plus two. You're getting all the essential upgrades going into that adrenal glands, things like that. Even the infestors are very expensive. So it's like you're starting all over with your gas, just getting, you know, Corruptors and Brulich. Just get Corruptors, Zerglings, and Infestors. Utilize it with your spine crawlers. Go for a huge trade. Yep. Fungal growth the Colossus. Big Actually make the, the Colossus, you know, punished 
once you uh, throw down those fungal growths because yeah. now they're locked in place. The corruptors can go at them, and then you can just play the spine crawler game against. Uh, excuse yeah. me, spine crawler infestor against I mean, the trades. Just like you said, is really big. Yeah. You can't trade inefficiently like that if you want to face, especially against MC. Correct. Even if he has stalkers, can trade efficiently. Game number four is brought to you, or game number three, sir, was brought to you by Game Minder, the smartphone application that lets you know about upcoming game demos and uh, just actual games. Download it at the App Store. We're back with game number four. MC has a 2-1 lead. Will he shut out the rest of Galaxy's hope and opportunity? This is our NSL Open Tournament runner-up. This is his opportunity to make his splash into the finals. This guy's an unknown Zerg trying to make yeah. his name. Will his run stop here? We'll find out in just a minute. 